सुपीरियर वीना केवल सिंड्रोम सुपीरियर वीना केवल सिंड्रोम और सुपीरियर वीना केवल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इस कॉज बाय द नैरोइंग और ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द सुपीरियर वीना केवा सुपीरियर वीना केवा इस फॉर्म बाय द जॉइनिंग और कॉन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द लेफ्ट एंड राइट ब्रेकिस ऑफेलिक वेंस एट द लेवल ऑफ लोअर बॉर्डर ऑफ फर्स्ट कॉस्टल कार्टलेज it terminates by draining into right atrium at the level of the second intercostal space or uh, right lies lateral to the right sternal edge there are constellations of signs and symptoms caused by obstruction of the blood flow superior vena cava secondary to external compression invasion constriction or thrombosis of superior vena cava can be partial or complete obstruction it is vulnerable to compression to space of occupying lesion as its thin wall structure so it leads to increased pressure as a result of edema head neck upper chest dilated veins in the chest pleural pericardial effusion cerebral edema increase rp So as it is vulnerable to compression by space occupying lesion its thin wall structure lying in close proximity to trachea posterior medial aorta medial medial is the right upper lobe as these structures are relatively rigid pressures on the superior vena cava will therefore lead to obstruction and it leads to congested facial veins facial swelling laryngeal edema and raised intracranial pressure and subsequently lead to hypoxia impaired filling of the left heart svc can become obstructed by thrombus or penetrating masses obstruction of the svc may result in venous hypertension upper body and reduced venous return initially the result of the swelling of the arm and face the laryngeal edema may cause the voice changes as the edema worsens the airway may be threatened in patient with chronic obstruction systemic venous return from the upper body can drain via the network of collateral veins into the ivc and azygous and hemiazygous system depending on the level of the obstruction of svc with the time the cerebral perfusion may be compressed and reduce output from the right ventricle and contribute to hypoxia and subsequent left heart failure The causes of superior vena cava obstruction include benign extensive compression, constrictive pericarditis, ascending aortic aneurysm, malignant extensive contraction with the with or without invasion, bronchogenic carcinoma, lymphoma, intrathoracic thyroid carcinoma, thymoma, teratoma, lymphadenopathy. Intrinsic obstruction include venous thrombosis, intravascular tumor growth. clinical features is shortness of breath chest pain cough dysphagia signs including the thoracic vein distension neck swelling trunk swelling and cyanosis the incidence of superior vena cava obstruction is unclear but is believed to be present in 5 to 10% patient with right sided intrathoracic malignancy in intrathoracic malignancy account for 70% of cases of superior vena cava obstruction the intravascular line related thrombosis uh, as well as benign causes account for total 20 30% of the patient all age groups uh, are at risk of the malignant causes and are more common in 40 to 60% uh, age group and benign causes up to 30 to 40 year old age group the causes of svc obstruction can be seen in 1 to 2% of the patient following the repair of the partial anomalous venous return so as we have discussed the patient will develop facial swelling congested of the vein headache and dyspnea and uh, one will see the facial upper lip congestion jugular vein distension strider pemberton sign pulsatile mass in the suprasternal notch hemoptysis and diffuse lymphadenopathy So the Pemberton sign is uh, when you raise both the arms above the head. Sudden gravity-assisted increase in venous return from the periphery causes rapid facial and uh, neck venous engorgement and respiratory st- st- strider. 
It's the pathognomonic sign of superior venal cable obstruction. So the causes uh, of obstruction could be malignancy, lung cancer, lymphoma, thymoma, metastatic, and germ cell tumor, benign infection, inflammation, benign neoplasm, hydrogen trauma. Malignancy accounts for 80 to 97% uh, of the cases. It could be lung cancer, lymphoma, metastatic, thymoma, cell tumor. Lung cancer, 5 to 10% of the lung cancer patient develops SVC. And uh, small cell lung cancer accounts for 50% cause uh, obstruction of the SVC and tend to arise central or perihilar right more than lymphoma. So uh, the chances uh, of having obstruction including the diffuse and lymphoblastic lymphoma. Benign uh, could be secondary aortic aneurysm and uh, syphilis uh, is one of the cause. Mediastinitis by histoplasmosis, uh, fibrosing mediastinitis, TB, actinomycosis, syphilis and post radiotherapy. Benign neoplasms would be substernal thyroid, teratoma, dermoid cyst, benign thymoma and cystic agro. Iatrogenic thrombus formation by venous catheters, uh, pacemaker implantation, TPN lines, Shaw's gas catheter, and HD catheter. So diagnosis is done by uh, CT scan, duplex ultrasound, CT, venogram, and radionuclear studies. The chest X-ray may reveal the presence of a space occupying compressive lesion, contrast enhanced thoracic computerized tomography scans or the magnetic resonance imaging which is useful to establish the cause of obstruction and guiding further management. Typically, two findings are required to make the diagnosis of SCVO on CT or MRI. The decreased opacification of the central venous structures uh, distal to the site of obstruction. This may be associated with visible obstructing or intraluminal filling defect, the opacification or collateral venous vessels. Venography with contrast may be helpful for managing the lumen of the vena cava and facilitates the permanent stents. It, it will not, however, help you elucidate the nature of extensive compression. Chest X-ray findings include mediastinal mass widening, high uh, dilatation and the pleural effusion. CT will provide accurate information, location of obstruction, determine the etiology of the obstruction and information uh, 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 about the collaterals and biopsy. Venography can give a precise level of obstruction, less information on etiology, requires larger contrast dose and usually done with IR management. Tissue diagnosis, uh, cisputum cytology, bronchoscopy, lymph node biopsy, mediastinoscopy, and thoracotomy could give the diagnosis. The management of these patients depends on the underlying etiology. The patient should be nursed upright as much as possible to limit the venous engorgement of the upper half of the body. Diuretics and the steroids may be used for the immediate symptomatic relief. If the lymphoma is sus suspected, it's important that the steroids are not given until the biopsy is obtained as this may interfere with obtaining the accurate histological diagnosis. Airway should be assessed and managed approximately as there is a risk of laryngeal edema and airway obstruction. The intubation be necessary if the patient present with the strider. Imaging with CT scan should be obtained as soon as possible to confirm the diagnosis and elucidate the cause. In the patient with benign SVC uh, caused by intravascular device thrombosis, anticoagulation should be commenced while the treatment is planned. The warfarin target INR is 2 to 3. The anticoagulation in the context of the raised intracranial pressure secondary to SVCO carries 10% risk of intracranial hemorrhage. Intrathoracic tumors causing SVCO will require the biopsy, which can be achieved by CT guidance, intrabronchial ultrasound, mediastinoscopy, 
mediastinotomy depending on the location of the tumor in cases of suspected lymphoma an anterior mediastinotomy may be required to obtain sufficient tissue for the accurate diagnosis so the treatment uh, goal is to uh, treat the underlying cause and should be tailored according to histological diagnosis determine the curative and palliative treatment the steroid therapy for the patient with severe malignant obstruction endovascular stenting for the rapid symptomatic relief chemotherapy svc invasion represents a non resectable lesion for the non small cell lung cancer the ascending aorta or the aortic arch replacement for the patient with external compression secondary to thoracic aortic aneurysm anticoagulation and device removal for the patient with svc thrombosis secondary to the transvenous catheter and pacing wire svc bypass for the patient with certain non malignant conditions such as chronic severe thrombosis and scarring from the long term pacing wire or catheter the aortic homograph gortex tube and the hand swing saphenous vein spirals can be used to bypass the uh, blood from the internal jugular or innominate vein to the right atrial appendage long term anticoagulation is required for these patient following the bypass procedure so chemotherapy radiotherapy surgery intervention procedures can be performed chemo versus radiotherapy is equally effective combination of chemo plus radiotherapy did not improve the response rate symptoms and long term survival the decrease of lr in lymphoma but no change in os surgical treatment uh, is uh, as we have discussed could be bsvc bypass and intervention radiology treatment obviously stenting The prognosis of the patient depends on the underlying etiology. SVC obstruction is caused by local malignant invasion, represents advanced disease, expected survival in short uh, in most cases. Two years survival is three percent in patient with SVC caused by small cell lung cancer and five percent in caused by non-small cell lung cancer. and svc caused by intravascular thrombosis infection has excellent prognosis with low human life expectancy if the obstruction is relieved and bypassed anticoagulation carries a 10% risk of intracranial hemorrhage prognosis overall a median survival is 5.5 months one year survival 24% 5 year survival 9% small cell lung cancer 24% for one year 5% for lymphoma one year survival 41% five year survival 4% non small cell lung cancer 17% five year survival two year person no statistical difference between survival rates between the patient treated with chemo radiation versus either therapy alone patients with responding uh, the clinically within 30 days of treatment have better one year survival so uh, the prognosis uh, of bilateral superior vena cavity uh, syndrome depends on the collateral circulation 20 to 50 years of the patient